Nama Shivaya. Everyone, welcome to the Successful Goddesses program. Uh, this is such a treat today. Everyone, we have a very special guest, Cynthia. Sue Larson, uh, for those who uh, she is new to, uh, her work is really involved uh, with reality shifters. Mm. And um, for those who I'm new to, I'm your hostess. Kathleen Angel, and uh, this is going to be an interview uh, style discussion today with Cynthia, and I have been looking forward to this for weeks since we originally scheduled it, which was at the time of her birthday. So, uh, Cynthia, we are going to uh, open that up. And as with all of goddess uh, guru celebrations, all right, because Cynthia is that. Uh, in her own light. She is a, a, just an amazing being. I'm going to share a little bit about that for you in just a moment. However, this is a part of honoring her, celebrating her lifetime of work. She is one of the most dedicated, uh, beautiful, long time goddess friends, associates. Um, I have marveled in her work uh, for the moment I met her, okay, uh, which was in the uh, 2000s, uh, maybe like over a decade ago, like 12, 13 years ago. Anyhow, um, a bit about uh, Cynthia Sue Larson. She is a best-selling author of several books, uh, including Quantum Jumps, Reality shifts and high energy money, right? Yeah, we like that. Money is a great thing. So is health, so is wellness, so is happiness, um, along with beautiful relationships such as ours too, right? They all flow together. They're all important, okay? And Cynthia, she has a degree in physics from UC Berkeley, an MBM, uh, an MBA degree, uh, a doctor of divinity. No doubt about it, folks, really. <laughs> and she is also a very uh, fine uh, martial artist, okay? Artists with money, 
Okay, she is an artist, written word uh, author, artist. Um, and she uh, has a second degree black belt in Kuk Sul Wan. And if I have that correct, Cynthia, is that a form right. of right. karate? Yes, it's a Korean martial art, so it's very similar. Karate would be a different language, so I think that's Japanese. Um, Kuksul Wan is the Korean martial art of, uh, it takes, it's an organization that takes the tribal knowledge and wisdom together with the Buddhist teachings and also, the, and the royal court. So it brings all three together with um, an internal and an external focus, really good for Qigong work, um, pressure points, healing, and, and it's just an extraordinarily comprehensive martial art. Wow. Okay. I'm super excited about that because I remember when you were going through that journey with, uh, she's also an amazing family woman as well. Uh, she was going through that journey together with her beloved husband, Richard. They did it together as a duo. I was so impressed. I was like, wow. All right. Um, a little bit more about Cynthia is that she is a founder of reality shifters. She's a president of International Mandela Effect Conference, managing director of Foundations of Mind, and creator and host of Living the Quantum Dream. I'm like, wow and just a little bit more um is she has been featured uh in numerous shows including gaia the history channel coast to coast am uh one world with deepak chopra bbc and Cynthia's favorite saying for years and years and years, it's like her motto. She always reminds us in every situation how good can it get? And let me tell you, when you get into the graces of this goddess, Cynthia Sue Larson, she's going to show you all of that. Okay. <laughs> she also has a, um, a free monthly enzyme. And let me tell you, it's extremely beefy with what she rolls out every month. And you can find that at www.realityshifters.com. Um, and today we're going to go ahead and open up the program. Um, as Cynthia and I were discussing before we uh, began the broadcast coming up, in a couple of days on February 3rd, uh, which is uh, this Wednesday, um, she has a new program. And uh, I'm gonna hand the conversation over to her. It's called IMAC Open Tables. And uh, Cynthia, would you like to share uh, with the listeners more about what IMEC stands for, I-M-E-C, and uh, what you'll be doing this Wednesday? It's super exciting. Of course. Yes, it's very exciting indeed. 
we'll be, um, this is our first uh, episode of a new show based um, with a group of those of us who are on the board at International Mandela Effect Conference, which is myself, and then Christopher Anatra, the quantum businessman. He's got that channel on YouTube. Then we'll have uh, also Jerry Hicks, the Dark Wolf's Den channel on YouTube. And he also hosts a show on Rip and Rabbit, actually a couple shows, I love to think. And then Shane Robinson of Unbiased and On the Fence on YouTube. So the four of us will be coming together in this episode to discuss, first of all, a couple of um, interesting Mandela effects that have happened recently that are very interesting in terms of what they mean for humanity and might indicate some interesting timeline choices that we collectively are making. Very positive news. Also, we'll be talking about the uh, recent debut on HBO of a program that sh shared some information from our first conference in Idaho. That was in Sun Valley, Idaho. Ketchum was the small town we met at for the conference. And it was featured in the show, How To with John Wilson, which is just currently showing on HBO. I think you can maybe watch it other places too. And it's episode three. It was how to improve your memory. And they delved into the Mandela effect. So it's quite, it's quite fun. I think you'll really enjoy our program on Wednesday. We'll be going a little behind the scenes on that HBO uh, and talking about what the Mandela effect means in terms of that um, debut on the sort of to collective consciousness and the general public who might not have been aware of some of these topics such as manifestation and certainly the Mandela effect. Wow, 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 wow. Well, you know, it was very fun this morning over here um, because the, from my viewpoint, folks, she's like the queen of Mandela effect, shifting reality shifters. These are like timeline shifts. Okay. So Cynthia sent my one to share with you immediately. It was so much fun. <laughs> Last night before I went, uh, to go rest for the evening, right? I was looking inside the refrigerator and I'm like, you know what? I better prepare some juice for more hydration if I want some later in the evening or I get up and I want some fresh squeezed juice, right? <laughs> so I made a bottle of fresh orange and grapefruit juice, right? Because I just wanted something fresh. Everything else was already consumed earlier in the day. Today, when I went to go wake up, I went into the refrigerator. <laughs> the juice that I made was still there, but there was some extra uh, coconut milk and coconut that I have flavored with uh, fresh strawberries and there was this whole jar and let me tell you before i went to bed that was not there last night i was morning up with the fridge and i'm like hmm, where'd that come from <laughs> there we go we shifted <laughs> so I, I was laughing because this is a beautiful, I mean, just that little juice story that I shared right now is, is okay, Cynthia, her specialty is in that. Though, um, like this little example I'm giving you about the juice, right? She's the queen of all that, right? She documents, writes about it, speaks about it for years and years and years and years and um well i love to share the stories too so that's a big part of what i do through the newsletter that you mentioned and that's of course on that website realityshifters.com and then as you mentioned each month i like to share the firsthand reports from people all around the world who are noticing th these things like you just noticed where you open the refrigerator and there's something there that wasn't there before. And you know for sure that that's true. So you're a firsthand reporter of the experience and that's so important. So for more than 20 years, 
going on, I think more than 21 years, we've been documenting this with the location, the dates, the times, and who experienced it. So it now is definitely one of the largest um, bodies of evidence online of all of these kinds of experiences, which I feel very grateful to be a part of that, to, to show that these experiences have been happening for a long time. Because some people, some people look at conspiracy theories that might attribute negative um, rationale or reasons behind it. And I like to show, no, 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 no. This has been going on actually thousands of years. And we've got some evidence to show that. But furthermore, we've been documenting it here for, like I said, more than 21 years on my website and other, I've since found out that there are researchers in England um, who are doing amazing research and have done amazing research. Mary Rose Barrington is who I'm thinking of. And she had written lots of books on, she called it just one of those things. So J-O-T-T. -T. And her research then goes back to the turn of the century, like the late 1800s into the 1900s. So there you go. We've got tons of reports of these little reality shifts. You might think that's not a big deal. Something just showed up. It's a big deal when it happens to you. So thank you for sharing your experience, Catalina. Yeah, I mean, and that's just like a little bit of juice that helped the wellness, right? <laughs> that I utilize, you know, to support my physical body temple, right? And I'm like, this is just awesome. <laughs> I I am aware of these dynamics daily um, and how you manifest it, though, you know, here's our queen of it, right? Who's got all the documentation over there. Also, something else I wanted to celebrate about you, okay? Because this particular program is in celebration of you, your lifelong work as a successful goddess from my uh, viewpoint. Right, and okay. with how I view you. And um, recently, Cynthia had put out a photo of her from 1979. Were, were you in high school then? Yes, I was in high school. So it was actually 78. I was 16 years old. Yeah. You see the thing, and I swear I read it was 1979. Uh, okay, well, what have you? Okay, 1978. And, and I was looking at this beautiful photo of her as a teenager, right? Here we are, and then she put the photo like a side by side, okay? So you'd see her 1978, and then what she looks like now in the 2021 timeline, right? Right. This gal here that <laughs> you are all tuning into today, clearly is embracing <laughs> that new youth coats. All right. I was like looking at her then. I'm looking at her now. I mean, let me tell you, there is such, like I'm telling you, I might even have to get out a pair of tweezers <laughs> or like a little millimeter measure. This goddess is still sporting the same fabulous look, okay? So, 78, that'd be 88, uh, 98, 2008, uh, 2018, am I getting this right? Yeah. Plus three more years. <laughs> okay. So, a 43-year span, and look how amazing she is. If you uh, visit... Um, her, I believe it was posted on your Facebook or in your reality shifters. I think I just put that on Facebook, but um, maybe it was just one of those fun things then and now they had a challenge. So I thought, oh, that's cool. I've got a picture from 1978 and 
and I've got one from this month. So I put them side by side. Yeah, I could put it on my, I have a bigger Facebook page, which is, uh, doesn't have that cutoff limit of how many friends you can have. So oh. uh, that's where I should put it. But um, I had it just on my personal page, which is um, not, maybe, hopefully everyone can see it at least, but I can't accept all the friendship requests. But I, but I also have the, the author page and I do respond to all the messages I get, so. Great. Yeah, well, it, it, you know, if for some reason any of you aren't able to see that, you'll just simply have to accept my word for it because, uh, I mean, and I'm just sitting there looking at her, like, beautiful, flowing hair, and I'm like, wow, she's really got this beauty thing going on. And um, whenever I see a new photo of Cynthia, she is always sporting the most magnificent energy through her eyes, through her smile, through her languaging, whether she is speaking, um, and or uh, speaking through written word, okay? And um, that is something I just wanted to cherish and hold near and dear uh, to my heart because it's something I really appreciate about you. Oh my, you're going to make me cry. <laughs> it's so sweet. Thank you. You really touched my heart. So thank you for being so appreciative. I, I was not expecting that. I thought we'd be just talking and chatting. I didn't expect <laughs> all this. So wow. It does feel like my birthday. Thank you. <laughs> well, that's what it is. When um, the annual celebration uh approaches for someone as amazing as you are. This is the time we can say guru, we can say goddess, however, I'm going to put those two together for this lovely lady <laughs> here, right? This is what it's about. These are what celebrations are about, folks. And here's the thing. We're celebrating a live goddess who's here in human form. Okay. This is what it's about. Sure, we can go look to Greek mythology or um, uh, Eastern, like Buddhist mythology or Hindu mythology or. Kemet, Egyptian mythology, or what have you, and connect to goddesses there who are in multi-dimensional forms, who are alive, who make contact. However, this being's here. She's <laughs> live here in mortal form now in the 2021 timeline. And we are honoring you. That is what today's program is about. Celebrating you, celebrating your birthday, right? <laughs> Even though it may feel belated, like, let me tell you, that celebration energy is what continues to flow, right? When you um, um, are here in the present moment. Thank you. And yeah. so I, I love how you're doing this because I can really feel it. And I, I, this is like the best manifestation energy there is when people tune into the ability to receive all that blessing. And sometimes we, for some reason, cut it off. And I love your show right now. I love what you're doing because you're just showing we don't have to do that. We can receive it and you know allow it in. That love, that unconditional blessed love and appreciation, let it in. I'm really, so thank you. It's a great gift you're sharing with me. Yeah. Well, this is what we should, from my viewpoint, 
and <laughs> I have a unique way of being and viewing certain things and I'm good with that right mm -hmm. and all I knew is when I saw it was your birthday and I just <laughs> knew but to my heart guess what we're celebrating uh Cynthia now now it took us a few weeks to get scheduled coordinated lined, right? Yes, I've yes. been fine doing it a few weeks ago. However, we had to get coordinated and and I just opened my arms and I just said, yes, we're making this happen. Regardless of whatever it's going to take, we are making it happen. And here we are. That's beautiful. Um, Yes. And uh, Cynthia, is there anything else within the highlights of the newsletter that you released here at the beginning mm -hmm. of February? Um, uh, like today or it, it arrived yesterday, <laughs> yes. something like that, right? And, or maybe a few days ago, again, you see the timelines get a little bit. Oh, yes. <laughs> and um, that you want to bring forth with where we're at now, uh, with what you're developing through your work, in addition to that iMac open tables that we already discussed. Oh, sure. Absolutely. <clears throat> now, people that are not familiar with my newsletter, I can share a little bit of what's in it. So then you get a taste of it. And like you said, you can read all the issues online at realityshifters.com and then decide if they're all there. And then if you want to, you can see, including this one for February, 2021. And this one is extraordinary because it features um, a video that I just did and a blog post. And so frequently that'll be the case. I'll talk about recent things I've published. And it was in response to someone wondering what to do because she was very sensitive and she felt like things, um, people are all excited. Like we have, like, you know, things are supposed to be better with various political and um, various medical things. But she felt like she's so sensitive that it didn't always feel that good to her. And what could she do? to try to get back into, like you would say, a positive timeline. So I did have a blog post to um, address like what happens if you're, if you are feeling anxious or sad or angry, um, how you can recognize that you can select, if you will, a higher perspective. And it's a fun video because it's, it shows um, literally how to do that. I give a demonstration of moving to a higher dimensional level of consciousness. And so I've got a link to the blog and the video right there in um, the newsletter. And if you want to know what else is in the newsletter, it's so exciting because I do share all these experiences. I'd love to share yours in a future newsletter, Catalina. I would just ask you to e see what I do is I ask people, please email it to me. And then if Catalina says yes, then she'll send like, okay, here's what happened. And she'll describe, I was making this beautiful juice the night before, like I always do for the next, or you pro, do it often the next morning. So it's not like this always happens, but the next morning when you open the refrigerator, there's something extra. It's this coconut water with strawberry that had not been there the night before. So I've got experiences like that. This month, I've got one from Canada where a woman was on the ski slopes to visit where she used to ski. There's even a photo of her and uh, her name is Jennifer. She was skiing and now she, she guides people and does this for a living, takes them out to wilderness places. But the extraordinary thing is she was skiing down the slopes and she got nostalgic. She was back at a ski run where she'd first learned how to ski. She was on her snowboard that day. She went into the little gift shop and said, um, like, oh good, you've got little signs of the peanut trail. The peanut trail is where she learned to ski. So she'd chosen that. <laughs> and then one of the double diamond, black diamond trails that, and she put them in a little, the, the shopkeeper kept them for her. And she went back out to snowboard some more. And she was having regrets, like, darn it, I should, I love this peanut trail so much. I should get two of those, not just one. I'll have to correct the order when I get back. Hopefully they still have some more, I'll switch it. So she finishes her run, comes down to the shop, goes in, checks her bag. They've been holding it for her. She looks inside and guess what? It's got not just one peanut trail, but 
two peanut trail signs as if she had already decided that and done that right from the start. And she was like, what, what is this? <laughs> Such a fun experience. <clears throat> so she shares that and I've got a story from Sweden. I've got stories from the United States. They're extraordinary. We've got a new Mandela effect featuring Cloris Leachman. Um, you'll just love it. So people that like to hear these uplifting, interesting, informational, and I find them very um, how empowering stories is full of those. So I've got those, then I've got a question and answer section. And sometimes I review a book, not this time, but um, then I've got an interview with Grant Cameron. He's an author of a wonderful book um, that I just read about. It's, it's access um, contact modalities. So I talk with him about what does that mean? And it's really turn, learning to turn off the left brain so you can directly receive information from divine source, the cosmic mind, whatever you want to call that, and just receive without our left brain sometimes just thinking that we know what's going on and thinking too early naming things and pinning them down before we really want to do that. So how to get back into that childlike wonder. Just an extraordinary book. And I, um, I do talk with him um, in an interview for Living the Quantum Dream. So those are some highlights from like you said, a very meaty issue of Reality Shifters, which I do publish every month. Yeah, yeah. I am super excited about that. And for some reason, as you were sharing that story, um, it reminded me of a story that happened uh, recently where I manifested a... a hundred and fifty dollar check um from wells fargo bank now i don't even have an account at wells fargo right they <laughs> sent an official letter to me right now what had happened is i had ordered a book called the good millionaire right you know about you know harv's work right I think uh, so. Yeah, I've heard of it. Yeah. Yeah, T. Harp. Mm -hmm. Anyways, he's he, he's well-known financial guru. Okay. Anyways, I got the book for one of my clients and um, made sure this client got the book, that I got the book, so we'd be on the same page, mm -hmm. right? The book lands at my post. All of a sudden, this extra $150, right? <laughs> it may seem like a small amount of money to some people, right? Other people to me. I mean, money's money. It's all good to me, right? I was laughing till to the hilt because um, of the miraculous form. And they just, they wrote me an official letter, said it, and I was like, right so, so what did it say it said that this is from your account that an account that you don't have or what right it said <laughs> we're sending you this money right i don't even have an account right my <laughs> the bank of america i have a paypal account right? right right and the letter said oh uh this is an apology i had a wells fargo account like long time ago like 10 years ago right right but it had been long gone close there i mean years, and years and it was all balanced out it's not like you knew for a fact i still had money in it or anything no yeah it, no it would be shut down the risk this wasn't a refund check that's what's so amazing i used to work for a bank you know so um when you close an account it really is a balancing out for people that don't know that it's not like the bank is going to have little like, oh, there's this extra 150. When they close the account out, that's not going to happen. Uh, the only reason that that might happen, and this would be something if you want to check it or not, but you might have written a check to someone and then they never took it or cashed it, but that didn't even no. happen. No, no explanation. I love it. No, no, there <laughs> is, but that wasn't what they wrote in the letter, right? In the surprise letter, Cynthia, what they wrote was that we may have held up your money way back when and this is an apology note and 
here's some money in case we caused you any financial harm way back when, like 10 years ago. It was an apology. That's so wonderful. And I was like, okay, I'm welcoming that, right? <laughs> and anyways, I, I have um, uh, shared it with a few people. I'm going to get that out more so people can see this amazing manifestations. Again, it's like, what? Someone's sending me a surprise check. Yes. Ten, uh, an account from 10 years ago. Okay, this is part of shifting. How many times does the bank say, wow, I'm sorry? Mm -hmm. well, usually only if there's a lawsuit or something like that. So No, there... and this was <laughs> I love it. I wasn't a part of it. <laughs> So anyways, um, anyhow, oh yeah, me too. And you should have seen me. And I'm like, I went to the bank and I said to the bank branch manager, can, can I open up an account here? We're going to invest the money back in here. So we're still waiting to see, you know, how that's going to manifest. However, because you were so generous, right, by sending that energy of apology sending the money i embraced the money right yes, living yes. artists with money miracle manifesting right cynthia knows all about that she writes about that in her books yes. right oh yes and, yeah. yes it's it's um so in my case i've experienced money showing up in my wallet like one bill at a time literally it, where it was a wallet that didn't have that money in it to begin with uh, that was an opportunity for um, prosperity that i encountered um going to a restaurant locally here in the bay area where i live with at the time my two young daughters and i described that in my book high energy money it was so much fun because We'd gone out to a restaurant um, called, I think Chevy's is the name of it. It was, they had the restaurant in Alameda. So it was a big outing for us to go to a, a restaurant with my two little daughters. And we, after we'd finished the meal, I was explaining that it's a good idea for us to live, leave a tip. And I was, because I was paying with a credit card for the meal, but I thought waitresses work so hard. It would be nice to give, you know, a cash tip to really honor um, their service. And it was, I thought this is a good learning opportunity for my daughters. Little did I know what I was about to be demonstrating. I mean, I thought I was just show, going to show, like, let's just make sure we have um, a good way to honor and respect the service staff. So I, I reached in my wallet and I just had like $1 bill was all that was the cash in there for the tip. And I thought, well, um, this is a good start. I put it on the table and I shut the wallet and I said, well, do you think I should look again? Because that was all that was in there that time, but maybe and the, remember, these are young children that I've got with me, like seven and nine years old or something. And they said, yeah, let's look again. Like, okay, that's the right spirit, by the way. <laughs> that kind of like, yeah. So I opened the wallet and sure enough, lo and behold, there's another dollar bill. So I pull it out. And now my daughters are, one of them is really revved. The other one's kind of like, yeah, this happens. It's, kids are funny. And so I put the second one down, closed the wallet. And I said, well, that's, a, that's still a good start, but I think we need more than that for this tip. So shall we look again? Oh yeah, you get the picture. So dollar bill after dollar bill coming out of this wallet. And this is not a magic trick. It's not a magic wallet. This was not something, I didn't stash hidden dollar bills. Nobody oh, did. My <laughs> <laughs> I want one of those. <laughs> Woo, it's like the never ending stream of money. Oh, let's keep looking. <laughs> Well, I just took what I just take what I need. That's something else. I, I, I like to live ethically, which is I believe in a win win. So I, I really do believe in how good can it get for everyone. So it's not just about me. I feel like heaven can be heaven on earth when everyone is prosperous, everyone is healthy, everyone is loved, respected, and honored. And so this is what this is my vision of heaven on earth. So for me, it's. Um, it's, it's not about how, like I got mine and who cares about them. That's ridiculous. You know, it's, it's much more. I think that that happened because I was in such a good place and it was something I knew I needed. My daughters are open minded. We were ready for that kind of a miracle. But I've since experienced all kinds of money miracles. Usually what happens and I did. I told you I worked for a bank. I worked in information security. Um, 
information technology. I was heavily involved in, and I've got an MBA degree, so I'm not um, making math errors or anything like that. So what happens when I get extra money in the account? Usually it couldn't show up like one or more thousand dollars. That's like it's always been there. So when I go back to try to do, it'll, it'll surprise me like, whoa, that's a lot of money. And like, well, that wasn't there. And then sometimes or in the early days, I would do the forensic accounting. Like, okay, obviously there was a bank error somewhere, but I, sh I should have caught this in the last month. Let me just go through the whole last month. It's not there. Okay, I'll go, maybe I was just, really out of it. Okay, we'll go back farther, not there. And then I, it didn't matter how far back I went, the money had always been there now, but it had not always been there before, or I would have planned things differently for vacations and you, you know, this, that, and the other. So it's, it's wonderful. And I think it's fun when it just, I don't have any questions asked. I don't investigate, like, we must get to the bottom of this because it's like you said, it's, um, you don't want to question that kind of a miracle. Well, he didn't say that, but that's my philosophy. It, it's really obviously something that is from divine source, if you want to call it that. To me, that's where it comes from. To me, every good thing comes from the cosmic mind, divine source, you know, whatever you want to call that. I don't think it cares what we call it, but some people call it God. And it's that feeling of source and love and unconditional blessing. And so just opening ourselves to it is I think the greatest gift we can give ourselves and each other. Flowers in my mini garden, how front. Okay, I uh, live on a property, right? It's, it's myself on the residence, right? And then there's a neighbor here on land. Okay, so, right? My drain, now they have geraniums too, right? They're yes. all like going, right? And I try to help them out a bit, but that is theirs, right? Mine are like, right? We've been through some very, uh, we, we experienced some nice days, however, it has really been dipping into the uh like 40s over here i mean that is cold for where i'm at in south cynthia's in northern california so it's a bit cooler up there however i'm here in baja california mexico all right and we've been having some very, very windy, uh, some stormy and very cold temperatures. Wow. My geraniums, I looked out the window today. They're blossoming, right? And so these are miracles too, simply with the elemental uh connections we could say nature angels um uh elementals of the earth okay their goodness we got it going on in my mini garden i went out there look before our gathering today there was two more fresh blooms that i'm playing mm -hmm. <sighs> And, and I'm, I mean, just like it, we would be like in springtime in the middle of summer. Meanwhile, you know, it's cold, you know, we, we've gone through these things, all, you know, other areas, all the leaves are off the trees, however, I have this geranium, right? Mm -hmm. And yesterday I saw a dandelion blooming and I'm like, ooh, you know, full yellow dandelion, right? And these are magical manifestations, um, you know, that you were speaking about too, yet in a different type of form. Yes, absolutely. Yeah, we can see these blessings everywhere. I feel like every good thing comes through. And I'm so glad you brought up these elves, fairies, and 
uh, you know, whatever you want to call them. <laughs> it's like oh, they are, gosh. the elementals are great. I love them too. And you can really feel that they're in our homes too. You can really coordinate the energy of your home by recognizing you've got a lot more support. You might think like, it's just me and I've got so much to do. Don't think that way. Recognize that you're able to send out the the intention to your helpers like this is your team it's like what well, what are we doing today well it's all about health and joy and ease and prosperity and fun <laughs> you can put that out there and get so much more back and uh, you know you can find it in your garden in your home um with your hair it doesn't matter what you're cooking you know everything <laughs> now cynthia you have a plant in your background what what kind of plant is that well, it's, it's a little um, tree, and I forget the exact name of it, but I, I got it from my daughter when she was, um, she, she would get straight A's occasionally, and when that happened, I'm like, oh my gosh, let's celebrate, pick the store, pick whatever you want within reason, and let's celebrate that, uh, you know, accomplishment for the year. This is what she chose, was this beautiful tree, and she did have it for a while, but um, it had died off. She thought it was dead, but it wasn't dead at all. You know, it just needs, <laughs> just needs that love again. So it's now getting quite big for a little tiny tree, but it's beautiful. Well, I know I'm looking at the <laughs> stalk of the stem and I'm like going, huh? Well, it's, kind of, it's sort of like a little bonsai tree. It would be a giant tree in nature, but it's, it is giant actually for a little bonsai tree. <laughs> right. Yeah. I mean, it looks very tall with this you know, a uh, thin little stem and the fact that it's standing up like that with the, with the bloom on it is yes, a miracle. It is a miracle. Yeah, trees are such a miracle. I, I feel like we're so blessed to have trees or canopies of trees at different heights and levels. I've got another tree in the house, a ficus, because I feel like plants are pets too. I did a video on that on YouTube. And I realized, speaking of YouTube, just for anybody that's interested in what's happening in a couple of days, that um, they, I didn't say where to find it, but there is a YouTube channel called International Mandela Effect Conference. And that would be what you type in to find the correct channel. And it's show, it, it, I didn't say what time, it'll be 4.30 Eastern time this Wednesday. So that would be 1.30 if you're on the West Coast, like, like you and I are. But if you're back East, then it's 4.30 Eastern time. And it, that'll be a live show. So you can join in in the chat you can comment, um, be part of the conversation. We'll have a special Q&A at the end to cover the dialogue and the, the ideas that come up throughout the show. So love people to join us for that. That is absolutely spectacular. And Cynthia, one more thing before we uh, wrap up today's program. Um, I wanted to ask you, if uh, you are open to sharing with the listeners and the viewers here, um, are there any successful like morning um, like rituals or steps or things that you do that assist you with supporting your daily journey of bringing forth what you do. I was wondering if you could share a little bit about that with us and what that may look like uh, to you, um, because that may be helpful for somebody else. Yes, well, this is a strange time right now. Obviously, we're in a pandemic. Um, so what I used to do and what I'm doing now are sort of two different things. But there's a common element no matter what's going on, regardless if I'm traveling, whatever. And so if you strip it down to the basics, um, that would begin with just a checkpoint in the morning to, re to pay attention, just with the first conscious breaths upon awakening, like, how am I feeling? And if I feel like there's something a little bit off energetically, that's, that just means let's fix that. If I had something I think is a nightmare, that's definitely let's fix that because it's just showing like there's something energetically off right here. So just like if you're catching a cold and it means you wanna drink hot beverages, stay hydrated, get plenty of rest. 
if you wake up and you're feeling like that was a little weird, what's going, there's just a lot of weird stuff all the time. But so it's no big deal. You don't need to make a big deal out of it, but you want to make sure let's clear it. So the first thing I do is just clear whatever that is. And if it's, I'm so sensitive, I'll feel things collectively in the conscious, you know, the global consciousness level. So sometimes I feel like, whoa, we're in quicksand today. And then sometimes I'll, I'll do my best and try to lift us collectively out of it. And sometimes it feels like we're still kind of in quicksand. I'm like, well, that's the, that's the heavy lifting for the morning. And then I'll just continue to lift myself up as much as I can to, because I remember how I can get into that bliss state of pure unconditional love of just feeling so much joy, so much ecstasy. And that is the root of all prosperity, all health, all well-being. So it's really starting with that checkpoint in the morning. How am I feeling? Working with breath and intention and movement, which is just qigong. You can do this lying down. You can do it anywhere. Like you might wake up on an airplane back when we're traveling again. And you can be like, ah, time to do that thing. I'm waking up for the first time today. Let's just take a checkpoint. It sounds so simple, but to me, it's the basis for everything. So that's the key. And then, of course, you know, I would love to add that special spice. The question, how good can it get? Even if it feels like we're in quicksand, it's like, yeah, but how good can it get? <laughs> That's right. Yeah, well, that is a lovely way to uh, set forth uh, the day. That is super awesome. That was one of the things that you and I share um, because I'll, I'll let you know, like last week I was doing super great with the dreams, right? Past couple of days, I was like, oh, right? And I'm like, what the heck's going on, right? So similar to you, I was kind of like doing that. I'm like, okay, how are we going to slough this <laughs> off here, right? Um, and uh and this morning, you know, I went into my uh, yoga, tai chi, qigong, um, energy movement, stretches, vibration, set up a, a, you know, a sacred space to mm -hmm. honor self. And I went and did that to help move, shift the energy around me then went into uh, water to sprinkle water often uh, I will take bath you know too um, with supportive high vi vibrational um, things for like hair or skin or what mm -hmm. happens okay and and then continue to keep um uh in doing that so that it brings me into where we're at now continual now supportive focuses right right um with that mindset you were talking about when you woke up you're like how could can it get mm -hmm. right how do I move myself into that bliss state? Mm -hmm. Okay. Yes. Which is part of the endocrine, um, pituitary, uh, hypothalamus accessing. Okay. Mm -hmm. And um, this is just as important. Um, these endocrine systems and, mm -hmm. or we could say for those who are very well familiar with basic chakras, right? It's all important. These are important up here, your crown, your energy, where you're receiving that God or goddess-like connection, right? Mm -hmm. And then that inner viewpoint and then speaking truth, like we're connecting now, opening up the fifth chakra right this is super important helps open up the energy opening up heart energy okay that helps open up power energy right mm -hmm. these are all equally important sacral energy within the womb even for 
you know, masculine beings, mm -hmm. that womb chakra is there, super important. And even with the, the base, right? That is all important, okay? It's all important. Yes. So, Cynthia, thank you oh. very much from the fullness of this heart, this heart, this little tiny heart here, <laughs> all of our hearts, your heart mm -hmm. connection with mine, supporting mm -hmm. listeners, their hearts as well. And um, uh, I appreciate you all who are tuning in to uh, listen and view today's program where we have been celebrating mm -hmm. this amazing being Cynthia Sue Larson. Again, you can find her at www.realityshifters.com. Uh, I would highly suggest if you're resonating with this goddess, connect in on that newsletter. She'll keep you up to speed on the latest. She'll also show you more goodness about what she provides in life for people. All right. Yeah. And remember, her program coming up February 3rd. <laughs> That's this Wednesday, yes. 1 30 p.m. Pacific and 4 30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. If you are in the uh, uh, Northern America, okay, um, continent, and otherwise check your local time zones. And um, again, they can go to YouTube and see the yes. podcast. Just go, well. yeah, go to YouTube and it's the International. Mandela, that's M A N D E L A effect conference. And that's the channel. And then on the day, on that Wednesday, you'll see that there's, it'll, you'll be doing a countdown, like a scheduled video appearance right before it goes to start. So just be patient and then it'll pop up right at, might be there a little early before 1 30. And then you can click on that and then um, you can join in the chat early usually and start talking and saying hi to some of the other people that are like-minded and interested in this topic so it's a great community love to see you guys there and yeah <laughs> this is going to be super great will it be recorded yes in the event somebody oh yes yes is able to align with that time say Abs oh gosh yes <laughs> you. thank you for making that point yes so a couple hours after that so about 3 30 or 4 o'clock california time on the west coast here it'll be a video. It won't be a live event anymore because it will have happened. Um, but there's no problem. You can still see the chat maybe, but you can definitely see the video. So the video will definitely be there. Yeah, live is always best. I think you, so, yeah. You, you, you get into the live energy, you're there joining live. Oh yes. Um, that's always the best, however, if it doesn't work out with your schedule or what have you, they're going to have it recorded as well. Yes. That is awesome. Mm -hmm. All right. Okay. Great. Cynthia, thank you uh, very much for being here today. We appreciate you um, from the fullness of our hearts. I feel it. Thank, thank you so much, Catalina. You're, you're such an angel. <laughs> I know you pronounce your name Angel, but you're an angel to me. <laughs> Thank you so much. Yeah, you're welcome.